Hey, everybody. Hey, how's it going? We're live. Welcome. This is Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How you doing today? Welcome to Friday. We made it, folks. Another week. What a week. <laughs> I've been watching TV the last couple of hours, hasn't it? Welcome. This is Bruce oh, here just remembered, I Bruce. forgot to mute my other uh, channel. Friday. Hold on we one it, sec. Folks. Another week. What a week. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> what a week. Uh, welcome to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. Um, there's a bit of a delay between me talking and what's happening on air. If you're just joining, um, let me know where you're from. Type in the, the uh, chat box there. Where are you watching me from and what's your high temperature today? Here in Creston, BC, we've got snow outside. Uh, we're about minus two Celsius. That puts us at about, I'm going to say about 28, 29 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty and white. I mean, you know, it's pretty uh, Christmassy looking, but Christmas is over. Uh, but uh, what are you going to do? It's January. Uh, it's supposed to be winter, and uh, you just kind of hope for the best, the best winter you can get. So far, can't complain with a 28 degree uh, high temperature. It could be a lot worse around here. Um, thanks again to all you regular viewers out there to who are watching my channel. Uh, the uh, numbers just keep on growing. Uh, I, I'm just uh, so grateful for your uh, for your uh, viewing. Um, on my uh, on my uh, subscriber count, uh, the other day we were at uh, 240, 41, 42. Now we're at 245, heading up to 250 subscribers. Uh, hopefully this weekend we'll break through that. And on my total number of views, my goodness, uh, we've gone from uh, well something like 30 odd thousand to uh, 38 thousand. We're now approaching 40 thousand views. Just just wonderful. I'm just I'm just you know thrilled. And I uh, really appreciate you folks catching up. Uh, again, if you're just joining in, uh, let me know where you're watching from and what's your high temperature today. Ask me anything you want about cruising. Today, I've got a couple of different topics to talk to you about and uh, go over a few things. This particular broadcast that I'm doing live right now will become a video later tonight. And uh, it'll be on the channel forevermore and you can watch it anytime you want. I see Mike is joined us from New Jersey. How's it going? 60 degrees. You're breaking my heart, man. 60 degrees in Jersey. Uh, we're at 28. You're, you're killing me. You're just killing me. I'll tell you, this reminds me of the time I, I was on a cruise out of New York with my wife on the Explorer of the Seas. And uh, we were leaving uh, Bayonne, New Jersey. And it was 60 degrees. And the water was as smooth as glass. Just like glass, like a mirror. The New York Harbor was gorgeous. And I took a bunch of photos of the of Manhattan and uh, the Empire State Building and that whole region there. And uh, that night we ran into a, to a uh, storm, <laughs> winter winter storm. And uh, for the next day and a half, we were dying. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. Uh, Paula, Paula K is here. Hi, Bruce. Heat wave in Hanover, 65 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're leading, Paula. Way to go. You're at the top of the heap right now. Way to go. That's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I so say yeah, that second day well, it was bad. We were, uh, I couldn't even walk on the cruise ship. It was so bad. I mean, I could, literally could not walk. I had to hang on to handrails because of the movement. I hate to turn anybody off that's thinking of going on their first ever cruise and talking about a storm. But, you know, it, it, it could get rough. I mean, sure. If you're taking a Caribbean cruise, though, uh, for the winter, this, this coming winter, chances are you're not going to run into any of that stupid. Uh, unless you're on the northeastern seaboard and they have another one of those bomb cyclones that they're famous for <laughs> well then you're you know then you know it could be pretty rough um uh, any anyone else who's just joining us uh, you know anyone who's going to watch this video tonight and tomorrow and the next day uh those are you who are you know with me now this is great but those of you who are going to watch this later the channel i have traveling with bruce uh, i talk about going on a cruise ship vacations uh i talk about how you can get a good deal on a cruise uh uh, what you should take on a cruise, uh, you know, uh, getting to the port the day before is always a good idea. Pick up some provisions before you get on the ship, save some money. And then I talk about uh, packages that you might or might not want to buy on, on board a cruise ship uh, to save money again. I, my philosophy is if I can get a five-star cruise line uh, at the price of a four-star cruise line or a three-and-a-half-star cruise line, that's a win for me. And uh, I love staying on a balcony room if I can. And uh, I pride myself on finding a cruise, say, uh, you know, in January, February. And if it's under 100 a night a person, and I can get a balcony for that, and that includes my meals, man, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm loving it. You know, I, I, con I constantly compare uh, cruises to uh, 
you know, one week, uh, you know, one week uh, uh, stays at uh, all inclusive resorts like in Jamaica or, or Cuba or Mexico or, or elsewhere. And, uh, you know, cruising uh, can be a really good value compared to an all inclusive resort. Uh, the thing that I love about being on a cruise, of course, is every day you're somewhere else. Uh, and during the day at sea, your views are changing all the time. If you've got an outside room, and you're 15 stories up, you've got a great view, the horizon, and you know, it's just wonderful. And uh, walking around the ship when it's moving, I love doing that, uh, the promenade deck or hanging out at the back of the ship and watching the, the, the propellers turn that water and leave that wake in the background. Uh, I just love it. It's just, uh, for me, it's therapeutic. Uh, I, I unwind. Uh, being in a, uh, an all-inclusive resort, uh, I, I'm just not a fan now at this age to want to be uh, stuck in the same place the whole time. And if it's a place where I don't have a car and, and can come and go at my leisure, then I sort of feel trapped. And my room is the same and uh, the resort's the same. But look, uh, to each his own, you know, if you're, if you're working, uh, you're slaving at work and you're, you're finally getting a, you know, a one-week holiday, a 10-day holiday, you're getting a break. And uh, you can afford a good deal uh, at an all-inclusive. And all you want to do is just rest by the pool the whole time you're there and get a tan and, you know, have a few drinks and have a few meals and then just, just relax more power to you an all-inclusive can work i mean that's why they are there they exist <laughs> there's a reason there's so many of them around the world but i just love being on a cruise and um it's not like i'm looking for action on the on the ship you know activities all the time i don't need to be stimulated with bells and whistles and, and lights and everything else but uh the beauty of a cruise is you can make it a very active uh, event or you can make it a very casual and slow and calm event it just whatever suits you it'll work for you so that's the thing i like about a going on a, on a cruise. Uh, today, I got a couple of topics I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to grab my notes down here. Uh, I got a couple of things I'm going to bring up. And um, the other day, uh, I was uh, I got a comment from a viewer last night, which I really appreciate it. The uh, gentleman told me that, uh, that he and his wife are going on a cruise tomorrow. Uh, they're going to be on the Ruby Princess out of Los Angeles. This is the Mexican uh, Riviera cruise, seven-day cruise, I believe. It's on Princess Cruise Line. Uh, they are going to be on the same ship I was on, I think last year. And, um, I think they're going to have a fabulous time, but, uh, they told me that they were checking out YouTube videos, uh, for the last week or two about this cruise and, 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 and seeing what they were, what, you know, what to expect. And they were watching a bunch of my videos. They found them very enjoyable, which I, you know, of course I appreciate hearing that. Well, um, I tell you, honest uh, story from me is, is the first time that I went on a cruise. I mean, the very first cruise, I wanted to investigate it as thoroughly as possible. And I knew I was going to be on the, uh, the uh, Hall in America, Oosterdam, and we were going to leave out of San Diego, right downtown San Diego. And uh, this is back in 2008. And um, I wanted to get all the information I could about the ship and, and the, the, you know, the itinerary and everything. So what did I do? I went on YouTube. And even back then, uh, you know, what's this, nine years ago, 10 years ago now, uh, I'm on YouTube 10 years ago looking up cruises. And I'm entering in the, in the search bar on YouTube, you know, the name of the ship and, uh, you know, Mexican cruise or something like that. And I hit the button and I, I found all kinds of videos about the Ooster Dam that people had been on it before. I found all kinds of videos about the Mexican cruise that I was going to be on, uh, Cabo and Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. Those are the three ports. Um, I found out about ship activities. Uh, and then, then I was curious, well, what, what's my room going to look like? So I started entering the name of the deck and I entered the room number and the Oosterdam, name of the Oosterdam. And I entered that and uh, darned if I didn't find somebody that had stayed in a room just a couple of down from my from my room in the, on the same level, just on the just on the hallway. And so I actually got to see what a balcony suite looked like in my classification uh, that we were gonna be in that, you know, that next week, week and a half later. And so I just thoroughly enjoy doing that, doing reconnaissance any way I can. Uh, of course, you, you know, you can always go onto the website of the cruise line, you know, and you can always look up what they're saying. Uh, uh, but you're going to get the cruise line view of, of the story, but you're going to get some nice photos because they take, of course, you know, they have professional photographers. But watching a video by an average individual who's been on a one week cruise and they've got that shaky handheld, handheld <laughs> cell phone, the smartphone. I don't mind it because I'm getting an honest interpretation of what the individual thought of the ship. And, and they, you know, they're walking through the buffet area or they're walking through the pool deck area. They're headed over to the spa area where the exercise machines are, whatever it is. 
I'll tell you, I, I watched hours and hours and hours of video about the Oosterdam before I ever set foot on the Oosterdam. And I knew where most things were. <laughs> so the, I didn't need to ask a crew member where a certain part of the ship was or, or look at the map on board all the time. I kind of knew what this ship was all about. And uh, I just, that's just me. And, uh, and uh, it worked out great. But, you know, if you're ever thinking of a cruise down the line, you know, you're thinking of a cruise maybe one day uh, in the Mediterranean or a Northern Europe cruise or you know, uh, a, a cruise through, uh, like, uh, you know, from Sydney, Australia to uh, New Zealand and back, that kind of thing. You know, uh, what I would do is I'd get on YouTube and I'd look up uh, people who've been on cruises in that area. Now, it might not be the exact same ship you're going to be on because maybe the cruise was four or five years ago and today they're using a different ship. Might even be a different cruise line. You might be more interested in seeing the ports of call and what to do at these various ports that you're going to stop at. Uh, good to know. Uh, also, you know, you're wondering what the weather is going to be like in, say, uh, oh, I don't know, in March, in, you know, whatever. Well, uh, enter in Google the name of the city or the town uh, and enter March, you know, uh, you know, March in Puerto Vallarta or, uh, you know, March in Sydney, Australia, whatever it is. Or just do a Google search for the weather hist history and you'll get, of course, the historical weather numbers, you know, what the high temperatures are, the low temperatures are, what's the precipitation and this kind of thing. It's always good to get that. But I love seeing, love seeing other people's YouTube work. Uh, some are incredibly professional. Others are incredibly amateurish, kind of like my work. And uh, <clears throat> that's how I appreciate it. I really appreciate them doing that. If you're watching this channel right now, if you're watching this guy talk to the screen, um, let me know. Uh, give me a thumbs up and let me know you're getting a good single. It's a sneaky way of me asking you for a thumbs up on the video, by the way. It helps determine later on how many people were watching this thing. And uh, text in where you are. Where are you located right now watching me? And what's your high temperature today? <laughs> Break my heart. We're at 28 degrees here in Creston, BC. I've got light snow outside. I'm just looking out there. That's why the glare is on this side of the face. That's the outside sun and snow reflecting uh, on my face. This is the inside of the house. And I've turned my lights on to try to even it out. But it, it's amateur hour here. I don't have professional lighting. Um, and uh, tell me where you're at and, and tell me what your temperature is today. See how warm it is. A uh, couple of other things to mention to you today. Uh, you know, if you're planning a cruise, uh, this one here is like probably your number one thing to figure out. <laughs> it's check your passport. Um, make sure your passport has at least six months left before it expires when you're finished your cruise, not when you start your cruise. So, you know, if your passport is in its last uh, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months, you may want to get a new one right now and uh, get it renewed, and then you've got that care off your mind. Okay, uh, a lot of people forget. You know, they they book their cruise and they book their flight, and then they realize, oh my god, my my passport's only got four months left or six months left. Because some countries won't let you in; they won't approve you for entry if you have less than six months in your your passport. Now, with a cruise. The chances are that if you boarded the cruise in uh, Fort Lauderdale and you're going to visit three or four Caribbean countries and then come back to Fort Lauderdale a week later, chances are you're not using that cruise to, uh, you know, uh, illegally become a resident of the Bahamas on this cruise. The chances are you're heading back to the United States. But some countries, they don't care where you're from and they don't care what, uh, what the reason is. If your passport has less than 180 days of life left in it, uh, you know, they, they won't approve you and, and, uh, you'll try to register on the uh, pre-cruise documentation. Like after you commit to a cruise and you book with a travel agent or you book it yourself, uh, on the internet or through vacations to go.com, which I've recommended to you or through the cruise line directly online, you're going to have to go through the, um, um, final booking in process where you have to enter your name and your address and an emergency contact person that can be called in case there's an emergency. Uh, and then you have to enter your passport information. And if your passport has less than six months, there may be a little red flag that pops up right on the computer screen. It won't let you go any further. And now you've got to scramble. And, it, you know, if you only got two months before the cruise and now you're trying to do the final paperwork and now you've got to get a new passport, oh, now the heat's on. And I know governments will, you know, they'll speed the process up for you for issuing you a new passport for you. But it might run you an extra 50 bucks or 40 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever the amount is. And that could be rather expensive. You don't want to get caught in that little trap. So think about that. You check your passport out even before you're thinking about the cruise. So, you know, you're thinking next year we're going on a cruise. Well, what's my passport? Like, oh, geez, it'll only have eight months to go by then. You may want to think between now and, 
you know, before you depart for that cruise, you may want to get a new passport. Anyway, just thoughts. Um, what else was I going to tell you about? Uh, yeah, I was going to talk to you about a survey that I just noticed uh, this morning. I, I was reading up a, 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 on a survey that was held in the United Kingdom, and they were uh, they were talking about uh, uh, best cruise lines to worst cruise lines. And uh, <coughs> I didn't see any report <coughs> where the worst cruise line was like a failing grade, but I did see a cruise line where the the uh, the uh, cruise line was rated a lot lower than the others. And uh, uh, some of the cruise lines I'm going to mention to you are these are all from uh, Europe. So some of these cruise lines are in effect uh, European cruises. But the top line, uh, the one that got the highest grades was Oceana Oceana Cruises. That's a that's a an expensive line to be on, uh, but the uh, the European travelers uh, were saying you now the amount of space you get for your cabin and and uh, the fact that the ship has way fewer passengers than some of the mega ships meant fewer lineups and much better attentive service from the staff got top notch marks and uh, you know you, the old expression is you get what you pay for. And I've noticed uh, this year, last year, uh, forever, whenever I've been cruising, and probably you too, folks, you're out there pricing a cruise, and sometimes you're asking yourself, "This price is too good to be true." <laughs> like, why is, why is this seven-day cruise three hundred ninety-nine dollars? And then you look at, you know, the name of the ship and the cruise line that's running it, and you see it only have a three and a half star rating, and uh, you're realizing that, well, you're not going to get five star dining. You're not, you know, it's not going to be really top line. It's going to be basic. And uh, now you've got to ask yourself, well, are you prepared to tolerate that for uh, for that money? Because you've got to fly there, perhaps. You may have stayed in a hotel before and after, and then you've got your tips. And so you add the money up, and you realize, well, for the two two travelers, three ninety nine sounds great on the base fare, but with all the extras added on, you know, it, it, if we add a hundred dollars to that, we might be able to move right up to a four and a half five star cruise line instead of you know being on a three and a half cruise line. So. That's something to think about. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Angela's, Angela's uh, just joined us. 73 degrees in Central Florida. Uh, Angela, I think you win every time. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, Apollo says, I'm the same. I will research as much as possible. I was just talking a few minutes ago, for those of you who are just joining us, about watching YouTube videos about any kind of cruise you're thinking of taking. And uh, the more research you do, the more you know, the more you know, the quicker you're with the program. And uh, off you know, off you go. Uh, back to this survey. I was just quoting a survey in the United Kingdom of some of the favorite cruise lines and the least favorite, the winners and losers of the survey. Oceana came at number one. The number two cruise line they talked about is Saga Cruises, Saga Ocean Cruising. I, I really don't know who they are. And obviously, it's, it's a regional uh, you, you know, European line of some kind. They came in number two. I've heard of this outfit, Fred Olson. Fred Olson, I believe, is a charter company that uh, uh, run some cruise ships. They came in very high as well, and uh, they were they were well-liked. Uh, looks like uh, Rob has just joined us from Nova Scotia. Hi, Rob. How you doing? It's 10 degrees in Nova Scotia, cruising out of New York in February on the gym. And, uh, man, I am praying that you don't go through one of those hurricane cyclones or those cyclone. Yeah, bomb, bomb cyclone. That's what it is. You know, winter storm. I'm praying you have a nice smooth sail out and enjoy it. If you're using, if you're going on the gym, I bet you you got a hell of a deal. And uh, way to go. Uh, I know that once you're past South Carolina, you, smooth sailing, you're on your way. You're going to have a great time. And uh, thanks for joining. Ask me anything you want about cruising uh, or anything else about traveling. And Gailey uh, S. Gailey has joined. Hi, Bruce. Just found you earlier today and have been catching up with your videos. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I've got a few of them out there, about 110. Just a tile. Done. Thank you for your tips and sharing. It's a real eye-opener. I'm watching you closely. It's cold here in England. Oh, my, you're in the UK. What's your temperature today? Because we're only, uh, we're about minus two today for our high. We've got a bit of snow coming down. Uh, but you can see here on the notes from the others, uh, 60 degrees in Jersey, 73 in Central Florida. Right now, uh, uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> right now, I think Angela's got it, uh, got it, uh, uh, got it down cold for the best temperature unless unless we find someone someone who joins me from brazil or or, or australia you know mind you in australia right now uh, i think it's uh, four in the morning so i don't think someone's going to join us from brazil anyway uh, i'm great i'm just glad you found our, my channel uh, i'm getting discovered all the time um a couple of weeks ago i was telling my viewers that uh, out of every 20 times somebody watches one of my videos the the average statistic 
uh, 19 out of 20 times, it's someone that isn't a subscriber. It's it's somebody that uh, either watches me very occasionally or has just found me and is just kind of checking me out. And I, I always I always hope that when a new uh, a new potential subscriber comes on board, that they'll give a they give the channel a, you know several views, check out several of my different videos, and see if something clicks that you like, and then hopefully you'll become a subscriber and uh, away we go. I'm always open to suggestions. Anybody wants me to do a video about a specific cruise or a cruise line or a ship, just let me know, and I'll I'll see what I can put together for you. Back to the UK survey, uh, Oceana number one, Saga number two, Fred Olson number three, kind of a, cr a charter outfit, Cunard number four. Cunard is um, out of the originally out of the UK, uh, now owned by uh, Carnival. Carnival Cruise Line bought Cunard a number of years ago, and of course Cunard used to operate the QE two, and now they operate the uh, the Queen Mary two, the the uh, the uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, they, they have like three cruise ships now. And they're, you, you know them by the color of the ship, black along the hull of that red, red and white stripe and a white top. And they are known for crossing the Atlantic, but they also are doing uh, round-the-world cruises and, and other segments. Uh, Cunard is also really um, – the, the word is not right. They have different classes. They have like a first-class, second-class, third-class type of arrangement. So depending on the cabin you book, that's the class level you're at. And at that level, you're allowed to go to certain areas of the ship, but you're not air allowed to go to other areas of the ship. And the higher your grade of cabin, the more of the ship you can enjoy and in food and restaurants and so on, which is what cruising, uh, cr the ocean liner days used to be like. Uh, there used to be the first class, the second class, and the third class. And, uh, you know, if you ever watched the movie Titanic, you had, <laughs> you had first class, second class, steerage you know where the hay bales were but it's not that bad anymore but um cunard uh, runs a, a a beautiful line uh they're known for great service and uh they pride themselves on the various classes of of service that they offer and if you want to lift dish out the bucks they will pamper you big time but of course all cruise ships have you know various distinctions of levels now uh and so you can you know pay more or pay less and and you get what you're paying for uh, four degrees at the moment, uh, Gailey says. Okay, well, you're ahead of me. <laughs> you're at least above the line, so it's not freezing. It's melting if you have any snow. Welcome aboard. Ask anything you want, by the way, uh, anytime. Um, after Cunard, the next like, line was Celebrity. And uh, Celebrity Cruises is owned by Royal Caribbean. That's a subsidiary of Royal Caribbean. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about who owns whom on the cruise in the cruise line business. If you haven't seen it, uh, check it out at your leisure. It's in one of my playlists. <clears throat> and I, I describe who the mother corporation is, the big company, and then who, what lines they own underneath. The biggest of them all is Carnival. Uh, Carnival owns Princess. They own Holland America. Uh, they uh, they own uh, uh, Seaborn, uh, and of course they run their own line, uh, Carnival, of course. And uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a big outfit. And then there's Royal Caribbean, and then we've got uh, Norwegian, and then there's uh, MSC, and there's Viking Line. And of course, there's a Disney line, uh, and they all have you know various numbers of ships. Disney doesn't own any subsidiary lines, though. They, Disney owns just their own. I think they've got four ships now with three on order. Uh, but all that's in that video. Uh, next line, it, it, this is kind of we're in the middle of the pack now. Um, Royal Caribbean, middle of the pack. The complaint about Royal Caribbean uh, is this is again from the UK uh, 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 folks, uh, Brit, uh, you know, Europeans and, and folks from the UK. Their, their uh, beef with some of these ships were the big mega ships. They're massive monster ships. They found them too noisy. They found them uh, with lineups at uh, various venues because of the number of sh sheer number of people. Uh, you know, Royal Caribbean brags about having 5,000, 5,200, 5,500 passengers on a cruise ship, plus upwards of 2,000 staff. Um you know, well, for some passengers, that's uh, that's a turnoff because they they want to go on a cruise and relax and be in a quiet place, not a shopping mall in the middle of in the middle of Christmas shopping season. They don't want to be in that kind of an environment. So I can see we're on a sea day, you know, and it's a beautiful sea day, and uh, or even on a lousy sea day, it's raining out. Uh, you're on one of those mega ships. All five thousand five hundred passengers are not going outside. They're all staying inside. So those outside decks that uh, Royal Caribbean is famous for with the wave rider machine and the zip line and the uh, rock climbing wall and the 
the water site, they might all be closed. And so now everyone is forced to stay inside uh, the ship. And of course, the uh, the mega ships have that outside walkway area, like that central park zone, which I think is open to the sky. And so you might get drenched walking out there. So people now are inside the main promenade because uh, there's nowhere else to walk uh, and get out of your room. And so that can be uh, uh, you know a bit of a problem with 5,000 souls on board. Um, the next line uh, that came in was P&O Cruises. That's also European-based. Uh, I believe it's an origin known as Pacific and Orient cruises. Uh, they came in uh, sort of lower end of the pack. And then there's another cruise that I don't know. It's called Marella, M-A-R-E-L-L-A, Marella Cruises, uh, European line, smaller ships. Uh, the, the, the complaint there was those ships are too small. <laughs> so there you go. A couple of questions coming in. I'll be right with you in a second. Um, also, uh, another, another line was Holland America. Holland America came in, and uh, it was... Uh, one of those lines that, uh, for whatever reason, it just didn't, uh, it just didn't come in for the, uh, in for the folks. Uh, um, what can I say? Uh, they, you know, they they couldn't, they couldn't, uh, uh, they didn't uh, rank high enough in the uh, in the uh, search engines or with the results. I personally like Holland America. I, I think Holland America is a great line. Um, it's a five star line. Uh, I have a soft spot though for Holland America. It was the first uh, cruise line I was ever on, but um, anyway, it was uh, it was uh, third from the bottom on this uh, on this survey. Second from the bottom, Princess Cruises, and you're starting to notice a pattern here. Uh, you've got uh, a Royal Caribbean down there, Holland America's down there, Princess is now down there, and the loser on the list, the bottom one, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Now they had a score of 60 out of 100, so it wasn't like they were you know got a 30 out of 100. They still got a you know decent grade. But they were complaining about the cabin size, very small cabin space. Uh, they weren't very happy. Uh, passengers were, were upset by it. And uh, uh, the, um, the uh, cruise line got low grades. And on the larger Nor uh, Norwegian cruise ships, lineups for the buffet, lineups for the cappuccino bar, lineups for you know whatever services you want, getting, getting an ice cream cone, this kind of thing. So these cruise lines have to be careful. If you're going to bring 4,000, 4,200 people uh, onto a ship, you better accommodate them in an efficient, effective manner. Uh, but, you know, show like show times, you know, uh, that's a problem. I was on the Epic. Uh, it was a, a Caribbean cruise, a Norwegian Epic, big ship. And I, I was, uh, wasn't happy. I had, to, I had to reserve virtually everything I wanted to do. We, my wife and I just wanted to go to the comedy club. We had to make a reservation for the comedy club three days from now. And uh, we thought we would see a, the comedy show sort of on the Wednesday and the Friday. And so we booked the we booked the Wednesday show. And we got a seven o'clock show, the early show, but on the Friday we couldn't get the seven o'clock, so we had to book the nine or the ten o'clock show. And I honestly, we didn't make the Friday show because <laughs> nine thirty on the Friday night, I'm yawning, I'm pooped, I'd been out all day. It was a hot, warm day. We didn't bother going, and I, I couldn't go to the early show, and and now that was gone. Whereas on the, uh, I was on Norwegian uh, Jade, uh, same line, uh, but a year earlier, I was on that ship, smaller ship, 2,500 passengers, and the comedy club was on every second night. They had like a Chicago uh, comedy troupe come out. Fantastic. Just first come, first serve. Just show up and, and enjoy. So my, my, it was a trip I do with my daughter. We'd go there. So the show would be at you know 8 o'clock or whatever it was. We'd there, be there at 7.45, sit down. We'd order a beverage from the, from the waiter. And uh, we had a great, we had great seats. And and when the show started, it was packed. I mean, standing room only. It was great. Everybody had a blast. About 350 people were watching, but you didn't have to make a reservation. And I, I thought that was great. If you show up early, you should be able to get in. Um, now, a comment here, a question here. Um, uh, let's see. Well, we've been booked for months. Uh, okay, Galley says, uh, call us staff, but we've been booked for months on Carnival Vista to St. Kitts, St. Uh, Kitts, St. Martin, San Juan, Grand Turk. We are working on a budget. Can we find out? our own way on these islands. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, do not get fooled by the cruise line marketing department uh, about short excursions and getting escorted tours and all this kind of stuff. You don't have to do that ever. Um, uh, I've been, uh, I was in St. Martin, uh, St. Thomas, San Juan on this Explorer of the Seas cruise I did out of New York. And um, my wife and I, uh, our thought was, we don't know how long we want to be on shore. 
we don't have any desire to see any one particular thing. I wasn't uh, interested in being on a golf course, for example, to you know to get in a golf game because I didn't bring my clubs or anything like that. Now there are there are sh- cruisers, you know, husband and wife will go, like two two couples will go, each in their own cabins, and then the husbands are going to go on a cruise uh, or going on a golf course at each port of call, right? And the wives are going to go shopping or hang out at the the ship. Well, the husbands they brought their clubs. And they booked their onshore excursion. They got their golf game booked, the uh, tea time reserved, and it's on. You know, and they're off they go. More power to you. If that's what you want to do, fantastic. If you're part of a wedding party and there's a wedding, it doesn't matter if it's raining or not. The wedding should be going on unless the groom backs out. <laughs> so the wedding's on. It's on. There's no stopping it. But for, for my wife and I, when we were on this uh, sh- cruise ship, Explorer of the Seas, heading to the Caribbean, I said to her uh, when we got to uh, San Juan, the night before, I said, well, we'll just, we'll just walk around and see what we see. And if we want to go for a little extended trip, we'll grab a cab and just tell them to drive us somewhere. Or we'll get on a hop-on, hop-off tourist bus if they offer anything like that. Or if we feel the need to grab a, a you know horse and buggy carriage ride, we want to do one of those, fine. We didn't do any of that. We got off the ship. And the first thing we did is we went across the street from the down from the port because we're really just off of downtown Old Town San Juan. It's really convenient. And just across the street, just down a little ways, was one of the big drugstores. <laughs> and we went in there. We bought some provisions. And uh, then we walked a couple of blocks. And we ended up at a Starbucks. And, uh, you know, I got myself a latte and uh, free internet in the Starbucks. We had our smartphones with us. So my wife and I got on our smartphones. And there was no rush. Uh, we got there at nine in the morning. We were staying until seven at, at night, at least. We knew we could take all the time we wanted. We also knew that we could get off the ship, go around for a little while, come back on the ship, have lunch or do whatever, and then get off the ship again. Uh, we could have gone in the afternoon for another couple of hours. It didn't matter. But uh, we didn't do any of the uh, excursions. Same thing on San Martin. Same thing in St. Thomas. Uh, and it would be the same thing for you in, in Turks uh, or, or any other stops. You don't have to do a any kind of a short excursion. You can just go off on your own. Now, you may find that on the ship, uh, after a day or two, uh, let's say it, in the dining room or in a buffet, you meet another couple or you get talking to someone and you find out where they're from and they find out where you're from. And you may find that you'll find a couple that's done this cruise before. And tomorrow's stop is so and so, and they will tell you, oh, there's a great beach, or a, with a bar, or a, a, there's a beautiful botanical garden, or there's a, and we love to go there. And the next thing you know, you're making plans to team up with these guys, and the, the four of you are going to share a cab. So the four of you get into one car or one minibus, and you go off and see this place together, and it's cheap because you're splitting it, you know, in half. Uh, you can do stuff like that too. So. Don't worry about the uh, excursion. Oh, one other tip I'll give you. You know, every night uh, in your room, you'll get the news, the news magazine. It'll be a little newspaper, a little flyer about what's going on tomorrow. And if you're going to be at port tomorrow, it'll tell you what city you're at, what the temperature is going to be at, uh, you know, what's going on. And you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to see um, uh, the short excursions that are being offered tomorrow. Well, you can do those yourself. I mean, you don't have to go with the the ship for a, a short excursion. So like in San Juan, they'll take a, a, a short excursion over to the old fort. Um, you know, you can grab a cab and tell the driver to take you to the old fort and just drive there. And, uh, you know, if you drive around there and you like what you see, you can get off and tell the driver to come back an hour and pick you up or half an hour if you want, or, or you know, he'll give you his card. You can use, use your cell phone to call if you want. But really, um, uh, you know, you can, you just get in with a cabbie and say, listen, take us to, uh, Take us to the beach uh, area and, uh, you know, or to a shopping area where all the stands, souvenir stands are. And then you get dropped off there and then you'll hail a cab on the way back to the ship and do it yourself. Do not worry about having to book a, a cruise. Some of these excursions are a lot of money. I mean, some of them are, you know, in U.S. dollars, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks a person, depending on the, you know, what the event is and whether lunch is included or admission to a specific thing or not. So, you know, bear that in mind. Anyway, that's, that's a, a, a a wide open thing for you to think about and, and enjoy. Um, yeah, this last thing about Norwegian, um, last place on the uh, on the uh, list. I was kind of surprised to see it. 
Uh, but then again, I realized, well, you know, oh, we're talking about uh, non-North American cruisers, generally speaking. And so tastes are different. I get that. Um, I know that when my daughter and I took a cruise with Norwegian Jade, we started in Southampton and we went through the Mediterranean and we ended up in Barcelona. And uh, the um, recommended tip per day, I think at the time was about 12 or 12.50. This is about nine years ago or so, eight years ago. And um, I'll tell you, at the end of the uh, end of the cruise, and actually all through the cruise, I got I have to say, all through the cruise, I heard uh, passengers talking to each other, and and this these these are um, folks from the UK and and other European countries. They're used to an all in price deal. They're not they're not used to it like we are in North America, where we you know throw a couple of bucks here and a couple of bucks here for tips for all these little services. They they're in a different kind of world there. And I heard people beefing about the fact that they had to pay this $12 a day tip. And on the last day of the cruise, like the, the, the not the day we were checking out, but the day before, um, you can pay your room tab anytime you want at the front desk uh, in the, in the, uh, in the cruise, so, you know, in the main lobby area. And there were lineups all day long of four, five, six, eight people, usually couples waiting in line to get to the front of the line to talk to one of the, uh, front desk people and most of the time they were there to settle up their room tab and they were looking to negotiate or, or lower their their tips they were reducing the amount they were paying because i don't know if you know this on cruise ships uh, the gratuity charge uh in most cases is a suggested charge it's not mandatory you can opt out of it now cruise lines it used to be that you you would be given little envelopes in your cruise cabin in your suite there would be on the last day of the cruise or the day before the last day, a little uh, oh, about five or six envelopes would be delivered to your room. And this would be the gratuity envelope. And you could then leave whatever amount of money you wanted to to the various people that were taking care of you on the cruise. And so what you would do on the second last day or last day is you would, uh, when you went to the uh, restaurant for your last dinner for the cruise, you would hand your waiter a little envelope. And in the envelope, you put in five or 10 or whatever amount of money, 10, 20, 30 bucks, whatever you want to give them for the whole week's cruise uh, or ocean, ocean liner cruise, really, because this is I'm going back a few years here. Same thing with the busboy. Uh, same thing for the maitre d' in the uh, restaurant. Then uh, your room steward, the person making your changing your sheets every day and taking care of all the little things you wanted. Um, then the, uh, you know, the, the, the other staff around your room, the folks who are always, you know, vacuuming the hallway all the time and the folks in the laundry area. The problem is and was in those days is that people would get missed. Uh, travelers, even with good intentions, wouldn't be able to find, you know, so-and-so to give them their envelope. And uh, the cruise lines, they came up with an idea going, well, why don't we just incorporate a gratuity system where we can just say to the, to the passenger, look, uh, it's so much a day. We can add it automatically to your room fee, to your cruise. And then uh, the, the money will be divvied up in a percentage basis to all the staff members that are, you know, taking care of you directly and indirectly. And this is taking care of people that you will never see, the dishwasher, the uh, the folks in the maintenance department, uh, uh, the folks that only are in the cabin area, like in the crew where the passengers are, at two to four in the morning. It's the only time they're up there. The rest of the time you never see them unless there's an emergency. And so that that came up, that became popular with, with passengers because that was sort of a flat charge. And for a guy like me, Handy as can be because I don't have to think about it. I just I just pay the amount and it's automatically looked after. It's automatically dispersed. Now, if I want to make a little tip to somebody for their extra special service, I can do that, and I love to do it, and uh, it's well appreciated. They get to keep that for themselves, so that's always cool. Um, Mike is saying on the gateway in November, couldn't believe they were uh, what they were charging for shows. Yeah, you know, Mike, you you just you just triggered something, and I really appreciate that comment. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about this um, the other day. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who got me on my very first cruise, and we were comparing what it's like now versus what it was like even five and ten years ago on a cruise. Things have really changed. Um, cruise lines are starting to become like airlines. The airlines, as we all know, are now the kings at charging nickel and dimes for everything. You know, it started with that that dastardly baggage fee and it you know first it was 10 bucks 10 bucks a bag you know or 10 bucks for your first bag and then 20 for your second bag now it's 25 a bag no matter what 
or uh, now there's some of them are charging you uh, 10 or 20 bucks for a carry-on or they're they're charging you 20 bucks for a bag if you pay online when you book your flight and then if you get to the airport and you bring a bag with you and you haven't paid for it, now it's 50 bucks because after all you're inconveniencing us for taking your money here at the airport you bugger <laughs> well cruise ships are starting with nickel and dimes um the the competition amongst cruise lines to get your business is fierce which is good news for us uh, you've noticed and we always notice in the press new you know more and new cruise ships are coming all the time um this is something that is working in our favor but it's also working against us because now the cruise lines are thinking geez you know we need we have to have 600 700 800 dollars a passenger for that seven night balcony room to make it pay and then they you know we got to charge tips extra and then uh, hopefully they'll gamble in the casino and hopefully they'll they'll buy drinks on the pool deck and hopefully they'll hit some of the specialty restaurants but you know we need that minimum and the cruise lines are starting to think, well, why don't we just start charging extra for like everything? And uh, we'll start with the shows. Uh, you know, if you want to watch that Broadway show we have in the main theater, uh, you know, it's so much money more. Or it's so much more depending on the seat you're booking. You want to be on the lower level or the first row of the balcony, we'll charge five bucks more than for the regular seat. Like all kinds of stuff like this is beginning to happen. Uh, cappuccino bars. You know, it used to be you could be on a cruise ship and you uh, you said to your, uh, you were sitting by the pool and uh, the, the, the the attendant would come by and say, would you like a drink? And you say, yeah, I'd like a, I'd like a latte. Oh, yeah, well, what kind of latte would you like? No charge. It was, it was automatically part of the cruise. Well, now you want a latte. You got to go down to the Starbucks counter or the latte counter, which is kind of a Starbucks. You know, they're imitating Starbucks. And you're paying three, four, five dollars a coffee for the high-end coffee. You want a regular coffee uh, up in the buffet or even in some of the specialty restaurants, some of them, you're drinking coffee syrup. It's a syrup with hot water added, and that's your coffee. Um, it's not even ground. So watch for that. I've talked to a couple of coffee aficionados on some of these cruises. And uh, on the last cruise, this is what I did. I would go to the uh, bistro bar for my breakfast. I'd go to the bistro bar first, get my latte to go take it with me up the elevator, go to the back of the ship where the buffet was, and I'd go for breakfast, and I had my coffee with me from the bistro. Now I got my breakfast from the buffet. I'd sit down at the table, and I'm enjoying my latte for breakfast with my breakfast meal, where before I would just you know have my bacon and eggs or whatever I was having, and I would have the coffee, and the waiter would, you know, the server would bring it to you, no charge, but it would be that syrup coffee because i had talked to a coffee aficionado who said oh no no you don't want to drink that stuff that's not even real coffee it's just an extract and i'm going wow like that. but it's cheaper for the cruise line so they're nickel and diming in certain spots wherever they can so that's something to uh you know we'll have to watch on that um O'Gailey says thanks bruce i love the idea of seeing if there's anyone to share the day with i'll, I'll check it out and let you know how we get on exactly when you're on a cruise you're gonna you're going to meet people uh unless you don't want to i mean if you just shut off and you know put your blinders on and don't want you know put don't disturb signs on yourself by your body language. You'll be left alone. But you know, if you'll run into people from time to time. You might share one of these hot tubs with a couple, and you get to talking. And where are you from? Oh, you're from uh, you're from Philadelphia. Oh, we're from you know Georgia, and, and you just hit it off and uh, you compare notes. You know, where, where are you staying on the ship? Is this your first time? And have you ever done this cruise before? Have you cruised before? And, you, and um, you're off and running. And there are times it happens on cruise ships where people meet people and become lifelong friends. <laughs> it really happens. Um, my my good buddy uh, had told me that uh, about seven or eight years ago he was on a cruise with his wife and they met a couple. Uh, it was at dinner. The, they came to a. They decided at the last minute they were going to eat dinner in the main dining room rather than the buffet. They had no reservation. They came to the uh, uh, to the captain at the front of the uh, restaurant. And they said, have you got any room for two of us? And the captain said, well, I can put you in with a table of, of uh, six other people. It'll be a table of eight. And they said, yeah, no problem. Well, it'll be fine. So they got sat, they sat with a table of eight. And there was another couple, a couple in that other six there. They just hit it off. And uh, they had dinner together. And then they uh, kind of went to a bar in the, on the ship and had an after dinner drink and talk. And they became pals. And for the rest of the cruise, they made a pact. Because it was like the second day of the cruise, they had five or six days to go. They made a pact with each other. And they said that for every night, we're going to meet in the dining room at 7 o'clock for dinner. And uh, we'll find a table 
for four or more if we have to, but we'll be together and we'll we'll talk about what we did on the cruise today. And then on the second or third day of this event, they were comparing notes that, well, tomorrow we're going to be in so-and-so. Why don't we get together and all four of us go off the ship together? And, th and they did that. Well, six months later, they were in always in touch with each other on email and they booked a cruise another cruise future cruise with the four of them and the, the, the each had their own cabins and they did the same thing all over again they hadn't seen each other for six months and it was just like a good old reunion they've taken four cruises together since on this deal from this one chance meeting on a cruise ship because when you're on a cruise ship you're surrounded by fellow cruise shippers and you've got something in common how did you get here how did you find this deal have you cruised before what do you like about this ship is this a good line do you like the other cruise lines and off it goes and you find people that are in your niche and who knows? It's got quite an interesting thing. Uh, Mike is saying, uh, Norwegian uh, never sent me a survey. I had a lot of complaints about the ship. Very interesting, Mike. Very interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, some of the cruise lines will give you a survey right on the ship. Some of them will email you one after you get off the ship. And uh, uh, I was thinking about the Epic the other day because I, I compared the Epic to the Jade. And I was comparing the uh, Epic to the uh, Explorer of the Seas and the other ships I've been on. But I have to say, uh, I have to agree with people with regard to uh, Norwegians, um, the issues with Norwegian. And that, and that is they're trying to offer the best value they can for the cruiser. Uh, the price is right. I mean, when you see the price of a cruise on Norwegian, you, you sometimes take a double take and go, is that right? Uh, you compare it to uh, you know, other lines and you're going, wow, what a great deal. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact, I just saw a repositioning cruise leaving. I think it's Tampa going to uh, um, to England, to, to London, uh, Southampton. And I believe it's a 13, 14, or a 15 day. Uh, forgive me if I'm off on that. But it's between 13 and 15 days long. And a balcony was something like 850 bucks. I mean, I, balcony for $850 for 13 to 15 nights? Man, that's a good deal. But you got to add your taxes. You got to add your tips. And then whatever charges you have. Now, to be fair to Norwegian, it's a repositioning cruise. They have five offers that will give you discounts. And it'll range from free Wi-Fi, no tipping, or um, um, uh, what is the other stuff? Uh, a drink package for two, or a specialty restaurant for like four specialty restaurants on the whole cruise, your choice, for two. And so you do the math, and you go, well, it's, it's 850 and then they're offering me a couple hundred dollars in deals, but then I'm going to pay more for this other stuff, and so it'll all kind of come out. But on a repositioning cruise, you should get a good deal, and this is a good deal. But the price you're going to pay is if the ship is full of passengers, um, you know, there's going to be lineups at certain spots, and you're going to be inconvenienced, and you're going to have to ask yourself, am I prepared to tolerate that? If you want a cruise where you are going to get first-class service, you're going to get first-class food, no questions asked, every time in any restaurant, you're going to get the, you know, the star treatment. Your room's going to be super, super nice with beautiful bedding and everything else. you got to go up to a five-star line, which Norwegian isn't a five-star line. It's a four, four and a half, uh, but it's value priced. Um, but if you compare it to like Seaborn or Regent Seven Seas uh, or even on a, the Viking Ocean Liners, um, those of you who know uh, river cruises, uh, Viking is the king of river cruising. I think I have 65 river cruise ships out there flying rivers in Europe and now in China. But they've now launched, I think, four or five ocean liners uh, that hold about 930 passengers each. And there are no inside rooms. They're all outside rooms. They're basically all balcony suites. Um, 930 passengers, about 550 crew. Excellent ratio to passenger, uh, crew to passenger ratio. Service is right up there, right up there. So that's uh, that's a line to consider if you want to get pampered. But you're not going to get it for $85 a night a person in a balcony. Sorry, you're going to be paying substantially more. You're going to get substantially more. So you got to pay to get it. Now, look, if you are thinking of a one-week getaway to Orlando and spending um, you know, a week in Disney World at the five-star hotels, like the best Disneyland resort hotels or all, anywhere around there, the Westin, Hyatt Regency, the Ritz-Carlton, any of these top brand names, you were going to spend seven, eight, nine hundred a night with the park passes and your meals for at least two or maybe you know, two plus the kids, you are going to be spending that kind of money. Well, 
if you're prepared to spend that kind of money per night, six, seven, eight hundred a night, all in, you may well be the perfect candidate for a Viking cruise. Um, I've seen Caribbean cruises as low as the low 2000s, like 2100, 2200, but 2500, 2600 for a week per person though. So that's five grand. Uh, so it's six, 700 a night. Uh, but boy, you're on a, you're on a five and a half star, six star situation. It's, it, it would be very nice. So you'll find a massive difference between Royal Caribbean or Norwegian and one of these ships. I mean, it just will, but you'll pay the difference, of course. So that's something to you know, something to keep in mind. Just checking uh, another uh, another comment here. Uh, see you, Matt. Thanks for watching. Gail Gailey is saying, I saw a video on YouTube where the lady said, "A take of water, one one or two dollars to tip." Yep. Uh, as you say, that extra thank you makes you uh, it makes you feel good, and the recipient plus you know what they're getting. Yes. Uh, this this is a tip uh, for for any of you out there who are going on a cruise for one week, ten days, two weeks. Take about fifty dollars and one dollar bills with you when you leave your home, American dollars, um, and and take those with you for tipping. Because uh, if you're on the pool deck, even if you have a drink card, uh, if you've got a drink card and the waitress comes over, the server comes over, guy gal, and uh, they want to get your order, you're going to show them your room card, and you know they know that you're on a drink pass or whatever it is, uh, or you may have a hand, you know a band on your hand, whatever. Order your drink, they bring you the drink, and you slip them a one dollar bill. They've already getting they're already getting a gratuity to bring you the drink. It's already built into this deal that you bought, or or if you're buying the drink individually, of course. If there's obviously, I think it's an eighteen percent gratuity. But if you slip them an extra one dollar note, that's to them personally. They get to keep that entire one dollar note. And now the light goes on. This passenger is going to be pampered until the cows come home because they know that if they take good care of you, they're going to be you're going to be looked after. You'll find that the second drink you get might be stronger than the first one. <laughs> a little more alcohol in it. Uh, they're going to be all over you for service. I mean, there's going to be all over. They, 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 there's an empty glass. It's gone. Uh, you bought, you grabbed a hamburger and some fries and you're finished and the plate's just sitting there. It's gone. Uh, you'll be really looked after because if you're a source of a little extra cash, they're just going to take care of you like there's no tomorrow. And this is, this is a good tip to even bring on a cruise ship or cruising, you know, tipping is already part of the package. It, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, these uh, these cruise ships with these uh, extra charges um, uh, get ready for more. I'm sorry to say, um, I've already begun to notice now that you know there isn't just a balcony room anymore. Oh no, no, there's there's the balcony on this level, and if you want to be on the like the tenth floor instead of the eighth floor, that's an extra five bucks a night per person. The room's the same. It just want more. And if you want to be on the next level, well, that's a different class. You know, in that in that room, we give you free bottles of water. And uh, since you're another floor higher, that's another $10 a night per person more. And if you want to be on the next level, well, that includes the spa package. You don't have any like special privileges or, or anything fancy in the private adult area. You're just in the same part of the ship as everybody else is, but you've paid 50 bucks a night more, 30 bucks a night more combined with your, with your spouse or your part, traveling partner. Uh, or you're paying maybe $150 a, a more per person to get a spa pass where you can go to the spa every day and enjoy the steam room and the jacuzzi and the loungers and that type of thing. So these, these extras are coming now uh, bit by bit, depending on the line and uh, Norwegian is doing it. Uh, Princess is kind of doing it. Um, a Royal Caribbean is definitely doing it because they, they have like 10 different classes of cabins available, like 10. There used to be inside ocean view balcony. And then, you know, owner's suite, you know, for the big ones. Well, no, now there's 10, 15 different kinds of categories of cabins. It's just going on and on and on. But the price that you find on the internet is the low price, you know, balcony, $4.99. And you go, oh, wow, I get a balcony for only $499. Yeah, it's on level six. And uh, right below your balcony is the lifeboat. And right below that is the promenade deck where they're walking and smoking outside. You can see the smoke wafting up into your cabin. Or your your uh, uh, cabin is 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 very close to an area where uh, there's just all kinds of noise and mechanicals, or you're right near the elevator banks, and so you've got to study the floor plan of the cruise ship you're on just to you know to double check where exactly am I sitting, am I located on this uh, floor plan? Uh, you may want to be near the elevators if you're you know you're having trouble walking, you're using a cane, um, maybe that's not a problem for you. Uh, but on the other hand, if you want you know 
a little more seclusion, a little more peace and quiet. You want to be a little higher, but not right underneath the pool deck or by the pool area. So you want to be more to the front of the ship where the pool is back here. Uh, there's all these considerations to, to take into account. But the dollars, they start to add up. Um, but I also have to say to defend the cruise line and, and to sort of you know say to you as a cruiser, look, um, it, you get what you pay for. And if it's a once in a lifetime thing or you haven't been on a cruise for 10 years and you might not be on a cruise again or for at least the five years, you know, for that extra hundred bucks, uh, and you get all these extra little extras, buy it, pay it and enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. I think I have about 10 or 11 viewers. If any of you are out there watching, but you haven't signed in, send me a note. Tell me where you're from. Uh, tell me what your high temperature is today. Uh, the winner so far uh, is a viewer from Florida, 73 degrees. <laughs> And uh, I believe, I'm trying to remember her name. I think it was Gail or Angela. Sorry, it was Angela. 73 degrees in Florida. She's the winner. I'm in Creston, BC right now. It's minus two. And we have a light snow falling. So we're about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm not winning the high temperature of the day award. I never will. Uh, but if you have any questions about cruising or traveling, just let me know. Um, a few more minutes to go before we wrap this up. I'm going to do another live broadcast tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's broadcast is going to go on air at two o'clock Eastern time. So uh, uh, that'll be uh, 11 in the morning in LA, uh, two o'clock uh, New York time. And uh, for those of you uh, who uh, you know, want to catch a broadcast from the beginning, if you just kind of caught this one halfway through, you can catch me uh, live from the beginning tomorrow. Uh, this particular broadcast will, be re, uh, will become a regular video on my channel and you'll be able to watch it. I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast. Please give me a thumbs up if you have. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you if you like to follow what I'm doing with the, the my videos and my cruise ship uh, information that type of thing. Love to have folks interact and and talk to me from where they're at and, and what they're uh, what they're doing. You're going on a cruise, tell us about it. What's the name of the ship you're going on? What's the cruise line you're going on? Uh, if you're thinking about a cruise, uh, tell me uh, tell me what your what cruise line you're thinking about. I'll tell you whether or not the cruise line's worth your while or not. I'll be more than happy to talk about that. Thanks for watching. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Hamilton's asking, Bruce, what is your next cruise? I am considering um, a couple right now, Matt. I've got my eye on the MSC, uh, I think it's called Seaside. It's the new ship that they just launched out of uh, Miami uh, about two weeks ago. They just christened it. Uh, it's flying the Caribbean this year, and there's a cruise coming up. Uh, there, there's a couple cruises they're doing that have caught my eye as far as pricing goes. Um, I'm looking at like mid to late March. And uh, we'll see if I'll, I'll catch that one. Now, I have friends of mine who are, who are talking about going on a cruise, but they're sort of on and they're off and they're on and they're off. And uh, I've talked to them about whether they want to do a cruise or not. And, and they, they sort of prefer the Mexican side rather than the Caribbean side. So I'm still determining that, but I'm not afraid of booking a last minute cruise. I'm not afraid of booking one with five, six weeks to go. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I, let's see, Nita Campbell, going to Gateway Sunday. Any tips for first time NCL cruiser? Oh, okay, you're going, on, on Nita Campbell, you're going on the uh, gateway that's out of New York, I think. Um, the the, the uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, uh, it's a big ship, very new. Um, uh, it's the one that got caught in that uh, storm uh, the other day. Hopefully, you won't run into any storm systems. The first day and a half will be kind of cool. Uh, of course, every hour that goes by, the ship is heading south at 25, 28 miles an hour as fast as it can go to get to the warm water and to the warm weather. So, you know, you're not going to be on the pool deck the first day, really. Uh, so plan that to be maybe a spa day. Uh, maybe book a, uh, you know, if you think about getting a facial or a manicure, pedicure, a massage, uh, or just getting in a steam pad, a steam room. I would uh, do this, though. The, day, the, the first day you get on the cruise, as soon as you get on the ship, take a tour of the spa. Uh, the, the staff there will show you all the amenities and the whole area. You'll see the workout room and everything else. There's trainers there. They're going to want to sign you up for classes. You know, don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, you could do it if you want to do it. But, I mean, uh, the machines are there to use at your leisure. But um, check out the spa because they may offer you a spa pass where you can just use the steam rooms, the uh, saunas, the uh, jacuzzi machines there. You can use their showers, which are much larger than the ones in your room. Uh, which include the use of hair dryers. Um, um, what else is I thinking? Of course, they provide towels and everything, of course, there. Uh, whenever I go on a cruise, I've been on a bunch of them now, I've never, ever taken a shower in my suite. Never. I've always taken a shower in the spa because the spa showers are like regular showers on, on land. They're, they're, 
they're like three feet by three feet. They're huge. They're not, you know, eight foot high um, and adjustable nozzles, the whole thing. Uh, I, I take the spa pass every time and that's where I shave and I wash my hair and uh, I, I enjoy the spa. Sometimes I do the spa twice. <clears throat> I'll have breakfast first at the buffet. Then I'll head to my room. I'll change into my trunks and my flops. And I put on my uh, my overcoat that the pro cruise provides me, a little morning coat. I'll head for the spa, and I will take a uh, I'll take a shower first and get all soaked up and rinsed off. Head for the steam room for a while. Uh, then I'll go out and um, another quick shower to cool down, and then into the into the jacuzzi. And uh, if the jacuzzi is a is a uh, co-ed, it's in a common area. Of course, you're wearing a swing swim trunks. If the jacuzzi is in a men-only section, which they also have for the women, of course, then I, I won't even be wearing my trunks. Um, but uh, the uh, heated loungers, the ceramic loungers, are usually in the common area between for men and women to enjoy. So I'll grab my trunks, throw them on, and I'll head out to the uh, ceramic lounger, and I'll grab a towel, roll it up like a tootsie roll, uh, like a roll, and I'll have that as a pillow for my head. I'll have two towels on top of the ceramic lounger to, to, to lie on top of. And I might have another towel just to go across my lap or across my chest in case I get a chill. But with the ceramic loungers being heated, I usually don't get cool. And I always bring with me a big old sport uh, container. One of those drink sport containers can hold uh, full of ice and two cans of my cola, which I brought with me on the ship, usually my caffeine-free Diet Coke. So I got two cans of cola with me. And I'm out there enjoying that. And if I need a little extra taste, I'll, they have usually some lemon with their water over there. I'll grab a little bit of lemon and squeeze that in there for a little added taste. But if I run out of cola, then I take the ice water that they're offering, which is usually lemon ice water or orange flavored ice water, fill up my container, and I keep myself hydrated. Very good, very good um, uh, deal. Um, and then I shower there. And I, I don't shower in my, in my suite. I leave the bathroom in our, my suite for my wife. And she has the whole bathroom to herself so she can shower or take a bath if it, if it has a bath in there. And then, the, the, you know, the makeup counter, I don't get in the way of all that. I've shaved already and I've taken care of myself. And I just brush my teeth in my, in my unit. It's the only thing I do. And it's fantastic. Very roomy. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? A couple comments here. Um, how long does it take to get your luggage on your ship? Uh, yeah, from the uh, – uh, Nita is asking, how long does it usually take for your luggage to get uh, from the loading dock to your room? If you're on the ship by about 11 in the morning, I'd say by 2 or 3 in the afternoon, your luggage will get there. I have had scenarios where the luggage doesn't show until 4 or 5 in the afternoon. No big deal. Uh, when it arrives, it arrives, and that's when we unpack. Um, let's see. For the gate, if you want to sit on the pool deck, try the adult-only deck. It's much quieter. Yes. There are spots on the ship where adult-only, and yet everyone can use it. It's not segregated for first and top first class passengers only so that's worth your while uh especially for quiet um and then uh, outside window nikki says she has an outside window and mike's saying he had a balcony in stateroom level 12. um uh oh and uh and nick nick nita said she made a bid for a balcony but never got it uh yeah the later you book sometimes you can't get the deal or sometimes the cruise ship will, will offer you to offer you a little lottery situation although you never know nita when you get to the check-in they might give you an upgrade uh, you, you're taking your chances i, I always just pre-book my room is for what i want and that's that um <laughs> yeah mike is saying that if you're a gambler smoking the smoke is bad in the casino uh you know, cruise ships don't ban smoking in the casino because they want gamblers to gamble and uh, they'll stop at nothing to get you to gamble. What I find is, uh, you know, if I'm playing the slot machine, the nickel slot, I, I generally don't get service very often by the attendant for a drink. Uh, but you know what? You can bother them. Uh, you, you just get up off the slot machine and walk over to one and say, I'm over at that slot machine. Could you, could I get a cola, please? And, and they'll bring you a drink. And they'll maybe bring you a free alcoholic drink. Just ask for it. Because uh, the casino really is allowed to do that. They're, they're allowed to promote. Uh, and if they want your business, hey, take care of me, you know. Um, uh, what else? We I do gamble thanks to the tip. Matt, for spe <laughs> especially, please sit on the waterfront. Amazing experiencing while the sun is sitting, for especially restaurant. Uh, probably a darn, darn good uh, suggestion there, Matt. You know, some of, the, some of the spots on the ship, you'll discover them uh, where you really want to hang out and where you're really going to enjoy yourself. It's the beauty of a, of a big ship like that. It'll take you, you know, a day or two to kind of get the hang of the place, but you'll figure out what you like and where you want to be. 
Um, but uh, so, some ships, uh, uh, Max is, uh, Mike was just saying, supposedly celebrity has no smoking. And I say, you know, way to go. Um, but, you know, Las Vegas, they still allow smoking in the casinos. Uh, when that's, when that's going to change, I don't know. Uh, by the way, as, um, Anita says, by the way, is my beverage free in the casino? I have a beverage package. It should be. Yeah. It, it, I, I think if you, um, if you uh, uh, get serviced by a, an attendant in the casino, you ask them, saying, uh, can I order a drink here and is it on the house? Is it on the casino or do I have to pay for it? You find out. If you have a beverage package, you'll be able to use that. But uh, otherwise, you know, if the casino has a deal, they should, they should allow you a free drink. I, I really, um, I know I've been offered a free beverage and I, I just drink Diet Coke, but uh, my wife's had a beer. So uh, uh, check into that. Ask, please, uh, by all means. They won't mind. Um, and uh, uh, getting kind comments from you guys. I really appreciate it. Folks, I'm going to say a goodbye for now. It's been uh, a little over, uh, uh, what, two hours? Oh, my goodness, is that true? Um, oh, no, an hour. It's been over an hour. Uh, thanks for watching today. Um, check with me tomorrow if you want some more, if I haven't talked enough. I'm going to be on tomorrow at um, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Um, 11 o'clock LA time in the morning, uh, live on this YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any comments or questions uh, uh, after this broadcast, or any of you who are watching tonight, uh, you want anything to know anything, just enter the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to get back to you on uh, what you need to know. Anyway, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend if we don't catch anyone tomorrow. And uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, and take care, everybody.